Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh and you're watching our history. Today we're going over the life of King Mpande Kasenzangakona. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like and if you're new here, consider smashing the subscribe button. If this isn't your first rodeo and you haven't shown some love to the subscribe button, now is your opportunity. King Mpande Mpande Kasenza Kakona was a Zulu monarch who ruled over the Zulu kingdom from 1840 to 1872. Mpande was born in 1798 and was the half-brother of the three most prominent Zulu kings, Shaka, Dingane and Sigujana. His father, Senza Kakona Kajama, was the king of the Zulu tribe during his early life. Mpande was not involved in politics during the reign of his half-brothers, but he played an important role in their downfall. When Dingane killed both Shaka and Sigujana and he assumed the throne, Mpande fled to the Boer territory in Natal. He later returned with Boer allies and helped to overthrow Dingane, becoming the king of the Zulu tribe himself. His reign is notable for peace and stability, as well as for his support of British colonialism in South Africa. Though his reign lasted for 32 years, he became a king in name only during the latter part of his period as rulership. His son, Kechwayo, took over as de facto ruler in 1856. Mpande claimed that he preferred a quiet life and was forced to become King. Biography Early Career Mpande, the son of Senza Gakona Kajama, and his ninth wife, Songinya Kangocha Klavisa, was born in Babanango, Zululand. Despite being considered a weak man when compared to his contemporaries, he was allowed to live when his brother Dingane assassinated Shaka to become king in 1828, unlike other half brothers who were eliminated. Although Mpande did not show any interest in the Zulu power politics, Mpande rose to power in the Zulu kingdom in the aftermath of the disastrous Battle of Blood river in December 1838. His brother Dingane's defeat at the hand of the Boers led to unrest which Dingane tried to control by eliminating potential successors like Mpande. In September 1839, Mpande defied Dingane's demand for his support in a war against the Swazi people and leading thousands of Zulus into the Boer Republic of Natalia where he hoped to find safety. The Boers led by Andres Pretorius and Gert Rudolf decided to support Mpande in his bid to us Dingane, hoping to gain concessions in return. In January 1840, Mpande's army led by Nongalaza defeated Dingane at the Battle of Mgonko and was proclaimed the new king of the Zulus. After the execution of his own general in Lela's Kasompisi, Dingane fled and was subsequently killed in Tikulu forest, leaving Mpande unopposed as king. Mpande later asserted that he had been pressured to take on the role of king, despite his own reluctance. In exchange for their assistance, the Boers made a claim to a significant swath of territory. Early Reign Mpande was the Zulu king from 1840 to 1872 and during his reign he negotiated a treaty with British Commissioner Henry Kluter to define the borders of Natal and Zululand in October 1843. He also made a deal with the Boers, ceding some land around the Klip River in 1847, which resulted in violation of the treaty with the British. Mpande had to reoccupy the land with his own troops to avoid further disputes with the British, but continued to grant favors to the Boers. However, Mpande's reign was marked by a brutal event where he ordered the death of his brother Nkonko and his family, causing a large influx of refugees into Natal. In the early 1850s, the Zulu king Mpande adopted an expansionist policy, raiding the areas surrounding the Zulu kingdom and invading Swaziland in 1852. The Swazi under the Zulu suzerainty, but Mpande wanted effective control over them, fearing Boer expansion from Natal. He saw Swaziland as a physical sanctuary if he became embroiled with Natal and was not prepared to settle for anything less than effective control. The invasion was successful and Mpande's eldest son, Kechwayo, proved his leadership abilities. However, the British pressured Mpande into withdrawing, which he did promptly, and the Swazi maintained their independence. Succession Conflicts Kechwayo, who was not officially successor to his father's throne, felt that his father was favoring his brother Mbuyazi. The succession was controlled by the king declaring the great wife, which Mpande never did. However, Mpande's cession of territory to Mbuyazi on the Tukela River only added insult to injury. Kechwayo and Mbuyazi both developed factions of supporters, and Mbuyazi also cultivating support from European settlers led by John Dunn. Kechwayo, supported by most of the territory's 
Arab chiefs decided to settle the matter militarily, he launched an invasion of Mbuyazi's lands and crushed his followers at the Battle of Ndonda Kusura, killing many, including five of his brothers and establishing his claim to the throne. Dan escaped and later became an advisor to Tlechwayo. Tlechwayo continued his father's policy of maintaining links with the British and Boers and balancing out concessions. However, he kept a watchful eye on potential rivals, including his father's new wives and children. In 1861, he ordered the death of his favorite wife, Nomanchali, and her children, who were hacked to death. While two sons managed to escape, the youngest was brutally murdered in front of the king. According to Gibson, in his later days, he became so fat he was unable to walk. His date of death in late 1872 remains a mystery as it was kept secret to ensure a peaceful transfer of power to Tkechwayo. Assessment Mpande's apparent passivity has been interpreted in different ways. Some scholars have seen him as a simple, docile figure who was easily swayed by others, while others viewing him as a cunning political operator who was able to navigate the complex power struggles of Zulu society. Gibson himself says that in his youth he was an imposing figure, quoting a French witness who said he had regal bearings such that a Parisian might believe that Umpande, in his youth, had frequented the palaces of kings. However, there is evidence of his disinterest in ruling even in his early years. Many decisions were made by his sons, who played a significant role in the shaping of the Zulu kingdom during his reign. Mpande had a positive reputation among Christian missionaries. He allowed John Colenso to codify Zulu grammar and produce Zulu translations of the Bible. Colenso's associate, Zulu convert Magema Fuse gave a biblically inspired account of the history of the Zulus in his book, The Black People and Whence They Came. In this account, God punishes wicked rulers like Shaga and Dingane, but the Zulus flourished under Mpande's peaceful, enlightened rule. Kachwaya was cursed because of his impious murder of Noman Charlie.